There's going to be a day when Christ comes back. Now today, when he's coming is a secret. And that is the day and the hour of his return. We don't know. But he stated clearly to the disciples at the time of his coming again, there would be signs that we're to look for. And what are some of the signs that he left? First, he said there will be wars and rumors of wars. Doesn't that sound like the headlines of our papers all the time? We get rid of one big source of tension. The world st still has a lot of little ones. Neither hatred, intolerance, nor aggression, nor even the clash of ideas died in the changes that took place last year and this year. Peace is breaking out, but so is conflict. And then the second thing he said, many will come in my name saying, I'm Christ. I'm told that there are more than 400 people in Los Angeles alone that claim to be Christ. He said there will arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. And many people today are teaching that we are God. All you have to do is to get in touch with the power that's within yourself. Unleash it and you can solve all the problems of life. And then thirdly, Jesus said there will, the masses will be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day will come upon myriads of people unawares. In other words, we're going to be having such a good time and being all of our parties and going to all the nightclubs and all the excessive drinking and drug use, the sex and violence are major threats to the current generation, it said. And they are major threats, but Jesus predicted all of that. He said they'll be living like in the days of Noah, eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, exchanging wives. And that's all going on today on a scale we've never known before. Where are our moral values? We go to the talk show people and they tell us what the moral values are at that present moment. Jesus made it plain. There would be untold wealth and greed and overindulgence as we approach the end of the age. One newspaper columnist called our American lifestyle a Babylonian existence. And then fourthly, Jesus said there would be famines in many places and pestilences, not universal, but in different places, he said. And much of the famine in the world today is man-made, the result of political struggles and civil war. And disease is breaking out. What's going to happen? And that's happening in many parts of the world. And then he said, iniquity shall abound. And he was talking about sex perversions. The young women that are being attacked today and raped is 40% greater than it was a year ago. Something has happened. It seems like some terrible evil spirit has been let loose, and he has. It's the devil. Somebody asked me, what's wrong with the world? I said, sin is wrong with the world, and the devil is flaming the fire. That's what's happening. And we ask ourselves, have our moral values gone completely? Almost. So that even Christians today are confused. And we become worldly Christians instead of Bible reading Christians and studying the scriptures and praying in our homes. We sit in front of that little box and get our moral values from there. And then he said there'll be an increase in earthquakes. There's some 6,000 earthquakes detected throughout the world each year. Earthquakes are increasing. What kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. We know that the whole world is not going to be saved, but coming out of the world are going to be people who will be saved because we look for a new heaven and a new earth as God has promised and we live boldly for him in the context of our lives today. The Bible says there's a day coming when God will shake the heavens and the earth. It will be a day of salvation for those who know Christ. It'll be a day of judgment for those who don't know him. Are you prepared? The scripture says prepare to meet thy God. Have you prepared? You say, well, what do I have to do to prepare? Yes, you go to church once in a while. You've been baptized. You take communion perhaps, 
You've taken your vows in the church, but deep inside you are not sure how you stand. You need to make a commitment to Christ today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. The scripture teaches that you can harden your heart. God is giving you another moment, another chance to say yes to him. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat and say, by coming, I surrender my heart to Christ. I want to be sure. I want to have the assurance that I'm saved, that I'm going to heaven, that I'm going to be prepared to meet Christ when he returns.